In the example below, a writer explains how classical ideas of pathos can be used to enhance the persuasiveness of a message. As you read, consider the details the writer has chosen, and why she might have chosen those and not others. Appeals to pathos, or what modern rhetoricians call emotional appeals, begin by making an audience more open to the message. Aristotle himself suggested this approach to persuasion in the rhetoric when he stated that, oh, your judgments when we are pleased and friendly are not the same as when we are pained and hostile, as cited in Horner, 1988, p.57. In other words, Aristotle proposed that writers persuade, in part, by affecting the mood of their audience and by making them better disposed towards the message. To maximize this effect, writers need to know and identify with their audience. Are audience members all the same age, or a mixed group? What socioeconomic group are they likely to be part of? What is their level of education? Asking questions like these will help writers to know their audience's hopes and fears, and prepare the audience to be more sympathetic to the message. Horner, 1987. Developing paragraphs with the right pattern of development the particular kind of support you provide will depend largely on the pattern of development you use for your paragraph, which, in turn, depends on its purpose. If you are trying to make a point by telling a story, then you might use narrative. If the purpose is to explain, step by step, how something is done, then a process pattern might be better. The key is in selecting the right pattern of development, keeping in mind that you can use a variety of patterns in the same essay. One way to think about different types of arrangements or patterns is on a continuum from the types most likely to be found in creative writing to the types found in analytical writing. On such a continuum, narration would be on the most creative end and cause and effect and definition on the analytical end.